on the World Wide Web you can find many circuits like this. Say a one transistor indicator circuit. And in fact it's a very interesting circuit. Uh, this is by the way a beginner's video but perhaps also interesting for everyone anyway. Here is the, the say the standard setup. A transistor here, in this case an NPN transistor that acts when it gets a positive voltage, better said a positive current on its base. It starts to conduct in the collector emitter lead and the red LED uh, shines up when here there is a certain connection made. And uh, the resistance between these two electrodes is uh, directly related uh, to the current that flows in the collector emitter circuit. So when you for instance push this with your finger and your finger is dry, a tiny current flows here. Uh, that means that the current through uh, from collector to emitter is also not very high and the LED does not light up in a fierce way. Uh, so here we have to say the standard lie detector, moisture detec detector. Uh, when there is a, a moisture here and it's very wet, of course in that case the current here to the base of the transistor is fierce, say 500 microampere or so, and that means also that the current from the um, collector to the emitter is also fierce, so the red LED lights up in a fierce way. It has of course everything to do with the amplification, the current amplification of the transistor. It must be between 250 and 300. So the classical light detector, uh, not a mystery, but very very simple and easy to understand electronic circuit. And here you see it in a somewhat better way. Uh, when the uh, when for instance this electrode is put in one hand and the other one on in the other hand and uh, your hands are moist the meter here will move more fierce to this uh, to the right in this case so uh, uh, the level of lying is directly related to the current that flows here so such a lie detector is in my opinion, complete nonsense, but anyway. Uh, well, I want to demonstrate that first circuit that's here. I made it uh, many times in the past. And here it is. I have to hold my camera with one hand. I give it now 12 volts here to the positive. And I give it a, a negative voltage. So when I make my fingers a little bit wet, push these two electrodes. You can see that the LED lights up. So this is a lie detector. When the, when the red LED lights up fears, you are lying. Of course, uh, when you are interrogated by someone anyway and you have one contact in one hand and the other contact in the other hand. That was page one of my video. Uh, page two is this. Pen over somewhat. Uh, it is in fact the same circuit but now you can align the microamperimeter more precise. So that could be helpful. Uh, for instance, when you want to use it as a moisture detector, you can align here, say, 
uh, when the two electrodes are pushed in the in the ground um, and it's dry between them you you can align the microamperameter to a certain position where you indicate that the ground is dry when the ground is wet so uh, the meter will move quite fierce and well it, of course you can also do that in this way but here the current is limited and here, here the both voltage and current are limited you can use a microamperameter of 15 microampere up to 500 microampere no problem with that and this is another say uh, ID you can get a very critical bias of the transistor and you can use here um, a LED, a red LED by the way not a white, perhaps also a white LED anyway try and test a red LED and here you can exactly set the bias to a certain working point when the moisture or the resistance better said the resistance between these two electrodes varies. It's perhaps a good idea, I have not tested that anyway, for instance, to connect here such a solar cell. And in that case, when the solar cell uh, receives a lot of light, the resistance is low, but when the solar cell does not receive light, so it's in the it's in the dark, the resistance is high, could be that in that case uh, there is no uh, collector emitter current or a very low collector emitter current etc etc. Uh, finally, uh, not a one transistor but a two transistor driver. It can drive a LED, but more important is that with this circuit you can easily drive a relay. That's of course uh, always interesting. There are many types of relays. This is a Bosch for, for automotive uh, applications, a 12 volt relay. I think, no, this is a 24 volt relay. This is also a 24 volt relay. Uh, of course, you can adapt this circuit to 24 volts. But in general, it's more easy to use for uh, voltages between 9 and 18 volts. The uh, important to tell that the, the Darlington here, this is a Darlington, gives a kind of voltage drop. That means that for a 9 volt relay, you need a supply voltage that's approximately 2 volts higher and for a 12 volt relay you need a um, supply voltage that's also approximately 2 volts higher that's approximately 14 volts but anyway it, it's all in the range of automotive applications here are the pin connections want to do one small demo. This is by the way a classical way to set up to activate a relay with a, a tiny current here or a voltage. This is in many cases the protective diode. Sometimes not necessary. Uh, has everything to do with say the, the pulse current that is there when the relay uh, switches off could be that it could damage the end transistor but the BD139 has a base voltage of approximately 80 volts so that's very high anyway again the relays here some other relays um, also 24 volt this is a typical as far as I know also a 24 volt relay, there are many relays, I wanted to demonstrate a 12 volt relay, but anyway, uh, doesn't matter much by the way, uh, these 
relays are uh, easy to find everywhere, 12 volt relays. And this is say the most basic circuit that you can make when you want to activate a 12 volt relay. So in fact it is this circuit, but now not a protective resistor and also the 10k uh, resistor is not there. So uh, the only thing that I'm going to do is touch with my hand, with two fingers of one hand, this point and that point and then the relay will be activated. By the way, I forgot to tell, that's very important, uh, that you see here always that 1k resistor. And when you want to do experiments, it's an extremely important resistor because it limits the base current. So when it is omitted here, and you connect directly 9 volts via some electrodes, to the base, the base current can get so high that the transistor is immediately defective, immediately, within a fraction of a second. And then it doesn't work, of course. So that's the reason why you always find, and also in many schematics on my YouTube channel, that 1K resistor going to the base. Protective, very, very important protective resistor. And here it is a 10K protective resistor to limit the current to the Darlington because of the fact that such a Darlington has an enormous amplification. So a tiny current on its base can, say, damage that BC547 and PN transistor, the driver transistor. And here again that 1K resistor here protective resistor and here also that protective resistor. Anyway, let's go to the final demonstration. It's 12 minutes on my camera. So anyway, uh, put the minus here to the relay circuit, the positive to the here relay circuit. So now, now we have that uh, Darlington that's driving a relay. When I touch here, for instance, that fir the base of that first transistor, you can hear that transistor hum because uh, in my living room there's of course always 50 hertz. 50 hertz is on my body. And in America it's 60 hertz. Or in other countries, anyway. This is a Darlington extreme amplification. I have showed that. And, well, how to switch that relay is to give that base of the transistor not a hum, but a positive voltage. I do that now with my two hands. You can surely hear that relay click. So when you give that uh, first transistor of the Darlington even a tiny voltage, say connected via a 1 mega ohm resistor to the positive, the relay will switch. So a very useful circuit, I've used it many times. It's quite universal anyway. Pen over somewhat, thanks for watching. Beautiful 12 volt relay, etc. etc. And here that relay activation circuit.